Hey friends, welcome back to the Brenton Not On Tour podcast. This week, my very special guest, Chris True. Who's Chris True? Well, he's a stand-up comedian based out of New Orleans. He's about to go through a hurricane, uh, and he's here to tell us all about it. How do you prep for a hurricane? We're not 100% sure up in Canada how you do that. We prep for blizzards, um, but we don't know how to prep for a hurricane. So Chris is going to tell us all we need to know about that. He's also got a brand new podcast called A Good Morning to Gamble uh, as part of the Boot Crew Media uh, Podcast Network down in New Orleans also featuring um, the number one Pelicans podcast, the number one Saints podcast uh, for the market. So awesome to have him on board. We get into all sorts of stuff and uh, happy to have him on board. He's a funny guy, stand-up comedian. One of my loves is uh, stand-up comedy, so I'm always uh, interested in how that world is brought together. So he's going to dive a little bit into that. Uh Coming soon. I mean, uh, I'm switching over to a LifeCast very soon. I've got a brand new sponsor in Partake, uh, non-alcoholic uh, craft beer. Uh, we'll get into all that down the road, but an amazing brand. If you're listening right now and you need something for the boat or the yard, uh, you got to drive a little bit later on or you got to do something that uh, you want to have a beer, but you don't quite know uh, how long you're going to be driving for or doing all the things. This is the best way to go about doing it. Um, it tastes like beer. They've got four different, four or five different brands. It's awesome. I love it. And, um, it's a great, uh, quick fix if you're anchoring for one. So they're going to be on board with me as I move forward, uh, for the next, uh, life cast and a few other announcements to come, uh, over at DeanBlundell.com. But until then settle in, learn a little bit about, uh, stand up comedy and also how to prep for a hurricane. Here we go. You're listening to the Brenton Not On Tour Quarantine Cast. So far, he's taught you about good coffee. Damn, Jimmy, this is some serious gourmet shit. Good music. I'm like this, you know, and then that becomes your thing. Music just does that. And the secrets to good travel. Exits. Okay, there's one back here. And there's uh, probably one over by the wing somewhere. Now, thanks to COVID-19, he's here to make sure that you're all good during this time of social distancing and self-isolation. So sit back and enjoy as he broadcasts from any number of exotic locations like Costa del Balconia, La Isla del Garage, Playa del Living Room, and the always magical Puerta Bacchiarda. And don't worry, he's already had the coronavirus and beat it. Still, maybe keep a mask handy. Here's BD. Welcome, everybody, to a very special edition of the Brenton Not On Tour Quarantine Cast. I am joined today by new contributor, blogger, and uh, overall great guy to the Dean Blundell Network, as well as uh, just a rad dude in general that uh, I'm happy to welcome to the fold and onto the podcast, Mr. Chris True. How are you, sir? What's going on, y'all? Happy to be here. Stoked, grateful, and I'm loving life. Thanks for having me on, Brent. Oh, man. You know what? Here's the thing. Um, It's an exciting time over at the network, but it's also just, uh, you know, I like having a great guest on the podcast. And and right now, um, no better great guest to have than yourself as you prep with all your friends. Uh, You're down in New Orleans and you guys are prepping for a hurricane, man. And and I I don't think I've ever had someone in the action before. It's almost like live action news. So here we are uh, with Chris. uh, and uh, I want to get your thoughts on uh, what that's like to get prepped for uh, for a hurricane to tell our Canadian friends uh, what that's all about. Yeah. So I guess, you know, it's it's kind of old hat for me at this point, kind of like, you know, Canadians being uh, being uh, excited about maybe hockey in the um, in the Olympics. You know, it's uh, except minus the devastation, although I'm not sure how the uh, Canadians records have been as of late. But it is a little uh, it, it, it's kind of old hat at this point. You know, I am I'm used to it. I'm born and raised in New Orleans. I lived here most of my life. And, you know, whenever we hear about a hurricane coming, if you're from here, the first thing you wonder about is like, where's the hurricane party? Because a hurricane right. party is something where 
basically everyone agrees to go to a certain place. You bring a chip and food. They be there for a long time, and the power might go out. Of course, after 2005 with Katrina, that changed. It became a lot more grim when a hurricane was on the horizon. But there's still so many. There's so many false starts when it comes to hurricanes. You know, the, the, the word in the street this time around was that there were two hurricanes, Marco and Laura. Marco was sure. supposed to hit yesterday. Uh, supposed to hit yesterday, and it was, uh, it was nothing. See, I, I, I brought my laptop outside to do, this, uh, to do this with you so you can see yeah. me. It's a beautiful day here in New Orleans, and it was like this all day yesterday, too. So you never really know what to expect when it comes to these hurricanes. You kind of have to pick your meteorologist right. and just go with what he or she says and, and ride it out. So you, uh, it'll just kind of, how much no, no, like notice you get outside of what we're all hearing on the, like, you know, the news, which is, you know, will give us what we, what we are being, you know, fed. But I, I guess the question is, do you living there? You have like a, all right, we know within 24 hours it's hit and land and we got to be ready to rock. Yeah, we have a couple of days notice and I really I really want to say for your listeners that it, it's not really the, the type of panic that you may assume it is for us down here. I mean, panic will hit whenever it's, uh, it, it, if it's like, oh no, worse than we thought and it's later on today, that's when you'll see gridlock traffic sure. and the grocery stores packed. I should say that I'm, I, I have a little bit of privilege going on right now. I mean, I don't have kids. I live on a second story of a business and, uh, you know, I don't basically don't have anyone else to worry about. So it is a different case. If you have kids, you got to pull them out of school or if you have to call out of work or you ha maybe you have family that's in the path and you have to go and help them. But uh, for, for, for most people, it's kind of a let's wait and see. Yeah, we'll go to the grocery store and load up stuff. But it is not, it's not panic. Now, right. <laughs> cut to two days from now and, and everything is um, gone shit. And uh, we listen to this podcast and we have a good laugh. But uh, as of now, no, no need for panic. So uh, I, I know in, in this particular case, obviously the have and the have nots and people like, as you mentioned, you've had a, you, you're fortunate in a, in a scenario where you get to, you know, you're kind of above a business and elevated, but there is going to be some people that this is going to be in, you know, an absolute nightmare for and change their lives. And, uh, and, and that is constant. Right. And, and I guess that's, that's just, I don't want to say it comes with the territory down there, but is there any, is there any help or prep for these people that will be absolutely devastated by this? Just they're living in a really bad part or they're, they're, you know, obviously you'd add everything that's going on with the world and, and all the rest of it. I mean, you throw a hurricane on top of it. Uh, what is the, what does the city learn from the Katrina thing to prep all sorts of people? But speak people, especially in in uh, poverty or or uh, or really struggling to get through something like this down there. Yeah, so there is voluntary evacuations that that people uh, that, that that people were made aware of a few days ago. I think there is a lot of people that just in general don't even mess with it. So it's like there's a hurricane, maybe they are out. They are going to their cousins in Dallas or they're going to their friends in Houston or they're just going north. There's a lot of that that happens. Uh, around the city, there's these pickup zones that are pretty easy to find. They're mapped out. You can find out where they are pretty easily. I think these big giant people with their hands up in the air, uh, like a big, like, like almost like a, um, like a uh, statue. Um, and if you go to one of those areas, a bus will pick you up and take you okay. out of town. So there are, there are measurements like that in, in place, but look, as, as scarred as New Orleans and the Gulf coast is by Katrina, which was 15 years ago in a couple of days, as scarred as we are by that, there's, there's been, uh, yeah, I, I say this all, all due respect, but there's been a lot of false starts since then. Sure. And so the, and so, you know, we, we, down here, we're kind of in a bad spot where it's like, oh, we hear about a hurricane and 
people who aren't from around here are like, well, y'all better take this seriously because of what happened before. But then we're like, well, what y'all don't know is this happens all the time. And we, and, and when we, you know, Margaret Orr is my favorite weather person. Uh, Mar when Margaret Orr is like, y'all don't and it's going to be fine tomorrow, just some winds. Then like the people who are from her, Kind of just to her, and we're like Margaret Orr says we're going to be fine. Yeah. So as opposed to mass hysteria, you know. That's right. Um, you've had it a, a busy couple of weeks, so just switching gears for a minute. Let's give some people a little bit of background on the Chris True. Like, um, obviously, stand-up comedy uh, is a big part of your life. Uh, you just uh, traveled a bit and to host. Uh, uh, I guess what is now being deemed COVID fast. <laughs> <laughs> and uh there's a, a few other things but uh let's uh, let's walk people through that as we're introducing you to the network but just in general tell me about chris uh the stand-up comedy and and what your world's all about man because uh it's quite quite great well thanks dude i i so i'm a comedian i i do it any way that i can a lot of stand-up a lot of improv so when a comedy festival here in New Orleans called Hell Yes Fest. And I, about six years ago, what you're referencing as COVID Fest, about six years ago, I got involved with a biker rally in South Dakota, yeah. which is funny because I've never ridden a motorcycle in my entire life. I right. never changed a flat tire. I know nothing about uh, motor vehicles, but I stumbled into hosting a stage at a music festival that's inside the Sturgis Biker Rally. It's called the Buffalo Chip. And it's a gig that I do every year. I just go and host all these really strange comedy competitions. And well, the competitions that aren't funny, but I, but my job is to make them funny, you know, like right. a slip and slide relay or a rope swing contest. And that's where I was for the past week and a half. I was in South Dakota for that gig. The one gig that not get canceled during all this. And of course they, uh, you know, the, the, the people of Sturgis took a lot of shit for that. And, but I will say that this, the festival that I worked for the Buffalo chip were very, uh, did all that they uh, did, did a lot of good stuff in terms of precautions. You know, I was armed with gallons of sanitizer, uh, more security gates than ever before. Um, so I was, I was happy for the gig uh, and grateful for the work, but yeah, that's, that, that, that's me. I, I find myself hosting strange events. I kind of just say yes to almost anything. Uh, I'm a big sports guy, which is, I think why we were connected um, mm. for, for various reasons, but big sports fan. I have written about my precious Pelicans and new Orleans saints uh, for various websites. I write about professional wrestling and I just try and do a, lot, a little bit of everything. You know, I, I like to, um, I like to have fun and write about things that I like. And I just like a lot of stuff. Well, I mean, you're a, a welcome uh, addition to the network because, um, uh, you know, we, we always need to up our game when it comes to not just talking about hockey, obviously. <laughs> We want to talk about other things with the rise of the Raptors. Obviously it's great to have another opinion uh, with the Pelicans and all the rest of it. And, and, uh, and Canada desperately wants an NFL team, but uh, I don't think we'll ever get one. So having some NFL talk and having some uh, American NFL perspective on the network uh, from new Orleans, especially uh, is going to be a welcome addition, but uh, you're writing uh uh, is also a welcome addition. So that's awesome. Uh, you've also got a great podcast uh, where you um, where you talk sports. Let us know a little bit about that. Yeah, so I've been in the sports podcast game for a while and kind of in a general, uh, you know, apply all type of way. But I have recently tried to um, try to zoom in more on the gambling component. I. I, I just, I love sports gambling. I love the culture behind it and it's just very interesting and, and, and such a fun topic for me. So I started a podcast called good morning to gamble and it's a weather, you know, weather themed inspired podcast project, you know, rise and shine with the lines, right. you know, serving your eggs over under every morning. Um, I'm, I'm making picks on the Instagram, good morning to gamble. And the pod, it's funny, the podcast launched like just before I went out of town. So um, now that I'm back 
I am excited to be um, more active than ever. And it's, it's, I, I think it's a ton of fun. You know, it's, it's, we don't take it too seriously. It's, you know, there's a lot of sports podcasts out there, a lot of number crunching, a lot of people kind of re- regurgitating the same information. And I'm coming more from like a story and culture and humor aspect of it. So if that sounds interesting to you, I would love for you to give us a shot. We're Good Morning to Gamble. You can find it on DeanBundell.com and uh, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you get your podcast. Um, c- comedy wise, uh, let's go with that way. How long have you been doing stand up for? I've been doing comedy for over 15 years. Amazing. Um, uh, I would say I've been doing it for real, for real, for about 10. Um, and yeah, I, 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 I do as much comedy, as, as many types of comedy as I possibly can. You know, I, obviously I do a lot of stand up and improv comedy, sketch comedy, whenever the opportunity presents itself. But, you know, a lot of people, when they get started in comedy, it's all about like, like you do it until you find the thing that comedy has provided for you. And so for me, I'm I'm kind of like, I've kind of stumbled into this niche of hosting weird events. So I get asked a lot to, you know, host a fashion show or like host this weird sports or go and speak at like a fundraising gala. But like at the core of what I do, it's, you know, stand up and improv comedy, but, um, but I am doing so much other weird stuff with it now. You're constantly working as far as a comedian. I'm fascinated by the process. So obviously we listen to how comedians get their start and they do the whole thing and trying to string together five minutes of great stuff or trying to string together 10 minutes of, okay, I got a good 10 minutes now, or I've got a good solid 15 minutes. I think Jerry breaks it down. Like, you know, all those guys, when you listen to like Seinfeld and those guys working it and bringing it back up, I'm fascinated by the process because I heard a quote that everyone's got five minutes everyone can be funny yeah. for five minutes. Right. But then even the least funniest person in the world has a funny story about something for five minutes. Yeah. So I think a lot of that has kind of organically changed with, with the way the world has turned the past, you know, five, 10 years, I think for the more old school, um, you know, original, original comedians, it's, it's really, it's about like getting past at a club. So it's like a club Want you to have, have your five minutes, your clean ten, your you know your um, your point. People are kind of writing their own rules and doing whatever the hell they want to do. So it's like it's almost like the new tight five is like what's your brand <laughs> or like you know like a comedian might not have a tight five minutes anymore but they have a podcast and a huge twitter following <laughs> or whatever right and now sometimes there's a problem when that doesn't translate into five minutes on stage that's where your like purist comedy will will come back um and uh you know and, and kind of went out the day but there's so many different ways to do it these days and so many different people are proving that what can I've heard some quotes before about stand up comedians like, you know, they're all working towards getting that television gig or they're all working towards getting that high profile uh, gig or Netflix gig. But what is the core of your journey? Are you trying to just make people laugh for the rest of your life and make a living at it? Do you care about landing a movie? Do you care about writing for Saturday Night Live or, or, or is it just all part of the journey? It's like, hey, if my stuff goes here, maybe someone will pick it up and ask me to write for SNL or one of these things, or I'll get picked up by, by Conan or I'll pick, get picked up by one of these writers. Or is that even on your radar and it's just maintain a life and do your thing and, and wherever it takes you? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, it's definitely has changed, evolved over the years. And I think for a lot of people in the beginning, it's about being discovered. You know, it's like, I'm going to do the thing so that I could end up in a writer's room for a show that I like, you know, or it's like you said, you know, Saturday Night Live is the, um, it's like the champ, it's like the Stanley Cup for a lot of, for a lot of comedians yeah. out there. But that has changed so much. Me personally, I, I really like just being able to do whatever I want to do. And I like the freedom and being able to just, to just take on whatever projects make me feel good. I'm not doing this in hopes that someone puts me in a movie. If someone wants to put me in a movie, I'd, I'd had that conversation for sure. I mean, obviously I I've had a couple of projects like 
almost get to the point where they where they blew up. Like I, I shot an MTV pilot a few years ago, uh, which was based off yeah. of a show that I made up, and that fucking cool. But then it got the, the plug got pulled at the very end, so I could never mm. aired, and we shot an entire season of it. So it's like I've been through that part of this journey, and the idea of relying on other people completely in order for me to be happy is kind of, um, I'm kind of out on that at this point. I still am eager to collaborate. I still am really down for people to discover me or, or, you know, or try to make something bigger out of something small that I'm doing. Obviously I'm still signed on for, for those things as they come, but I, I'm not waking up every day, you know, submitting writer packets and writing pilot episodes. You know, I'm, um, I'm just going to keep doing my thing. I'd imagine that that would drive you a little bit crazy uh, if you hold on to that side of it. The other side of it, obviously, is getting profile helps with like getting booked more. But I guess sure. we're, like it's the t- it's the ten thousand hours rule of anything that we all do. The the more you put into it, the more people are going to hear about you and your community. Uh, from what I see, as competitive as it is, is also very supportive. So that's got to be refreshing when when a comedian that you know lands something, or they or they do something because you're all kind of working towards the same thing. And then I would also imagine at the same breath, it's like, fuck, how did he get that? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm funnier than him. How did they get that or her or whatever? You know, so it's got to be a little bit of competition, but also kind of fun too, right? Yeah, for sure. I think it's helpful to have a like good for them, not for me mentality. You know, if someone right. gets something, it's like, and that has happened to me before. There, there's someone that I, uh, th- th- their introduction to comedy was taking one of my improv classes and we got to be good friends. They started doing stand up. They, they, they kept evolving. They eventually moved out, uh, moved out to LA and got a TV show. And like, it's like the head writer and lead on like a comedy show. And, and there's an element of that, of course, where it's, well, mostly it's like, that's really cool. Um, but there is a, it's, there can be an element of like, wow, that's crazy that that happened to them and not me. But at the same time, it's like I wasn't writing, I wasn't writing comedy show pilots. I like if someone ever came to me and said, "You are incredible. I love you. I have all this money and all this power. Send me your script right now, and I'm going to get it made." I would not have a thirty minute comedy show script to send them. Sure. I would send them a clip of me on stage or I'd send them a, a, a video I've already done. But so, so when someone gets a gig like that and, and, you know, and you don't get it air quotes, it, it's oftentimes it's like, well, were you even trying to do that? You know, I, uh, do you study comedy? I, I study more like self-improvement and self-development type stuff more than I study comedy at this point, but obviously I consume a lot of it, but yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm not like, Oh, I need to go watch George Carlin for an hour today and take notes. If I'm taking notes on something for an hour, it's probably something that someone did in like business, <laughs> you know, is it healthy? Uh, is it healthy to, to kind of, obviously you're going to have your influences, but like for me, for podcasting wise, I listen to, I guess like musicians are influenced by other musicians or other songs or, Oh, this inspired me to do this. The podcast thing for me is, you know, still only 50 episodes. So I'm, I, I know what I want to kind of hear out of a podcast, but I also don't listen to 40 different podcasts. So I don't get caught into this weird kind of, flow that everyone else is doing you kind of want it to kind of just flow organically does comedy have the same thing where you just get so enamored by a comedian and how their flow and cadence is that it can creep into your delivery or are you able to separate it uh, i'm I, i'm able to separate it i it, it is hard though you know if 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 you you know a good example i have i really love hannibal burris uh i've i've worked with him a handful of times here in new orleans um I, I just really, I, I like him as a, as a person 
And he's been the same person as far as I've known him, uh, but, you know, from be, being like kind of big to like kind of really big. And there's definitely been uh, a time where I've listened to so much Hannibal Burris, where and then I'm on stage, and I'm like, oh, wow, I sound like Hannibal Burris right now. <laughs> and so, th- so that can happen. I'm sure everyone has a story like that. And so you kind of have to be aware that, oh, no, I, I, I need to diversify <laughs> my uh, – what I'm listening to. And the same goes for like sports podcasts. You know, if you listen to the same sports podcasts over and over again, eventually your podcast, you're going to be like doing an accidental impression of, of what you're listening to. And then if the people who listen to you also listen to that. They're going to be like, well, shit, it sounds like I'm listening to a, to a B version of this very successful thing. And I want to hear what you have to say. And so that's an important thing. I think in all media, but for sure in comedy is to like be influenced, but, but be as diverse as possible with your influence. Sure. Well, that's, uh, I mean, we're all in this together to create content, have some fun and, and all the rest of it. So I'm, I'm having a blast doing it and uh, learning stories about people. Uh, so where can everybody find you online? Let's get to that part. Love it. So, well, the thing I'd love to push right now is uh, my Instagram because so much is being funneled through that. So yeah. it's Chris True. It's Chris, C-H-R-I-S, True, T-R-E-W. I'm posting every every podcast and article I write on on there. Got a couple of book projects in the works. I'm um, just trying to stay as active as possible and making things happen. And hey, next time, uh, whenever the world comes back to normal and I'm able to hit the road, I would love for you to come and see a show. But I just don't have a show calendar to plug right now. So let's, let's plug some made-up shows. You know, I'll be in Vancouver you know, November, 2021, Right. I'll be in Toronto, October, 2022. And, uh, I'll be in, um, <laughs> Bradley, Illinois. Never. What about Lincoln, Nebraska? They got great coffee. Let's do it. Let's go. Yeah. I actually, I saw your video in Lincoln, Nebraska. I know yeah. Method. There. Method. I was there last summer. Uh, you know, uh, I won't, uh, I won't, um, what do you call it? Um, my videos are timeless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I could have been there two days ago or I could have been there last summer. Whatever. Hey, that's t- the key. I don't even know if they're still open. I tried to call down there a little while ago. A uh, great shop down there called method. Uh, amazing guys. And um, I actually was a big supporter of them and they're, and I lost their hat it was stolen. But anyways, I ca- tried to call down there to say hi and, and see how they're doing, but I, I wasn't able to get through to anybody, but it's a, a great place. But um well, Chris, I, I, uh, I think uh, your journey and, and uh, path is uh, very cool. Always great. I love comedy. Comedy is a, I'm a huge uh, comedian fan. Um, I know what I love. Uh, I've got five minutes. That's all I got. I can be Hell funny yeah. for five minutes. Um, and uh, I welcome you to that, that portion of the network. I, I welcome you to, um, to our world a bit. And, uh, and I'm really happy to have you and really happy to uh, – to, your, to watch your writing and I, and I actually I'm dying to see you do stand up. So hopefully we can arrange something, even if it's online. Uh, but uh, boot Coup media uh, down there is where we can find you uh, as well. And uh, your big Pelicans guy. So as basketball uh, rises uh, uh, and we create a basketball show on a network, hopefully we'll have you be a part of that as well. And there's just so much that Absolutely. we can, we can do with it in the meantime. Be safe down there, my friend, because uh, I will, you know, we uh, we want the best for all you guys. And hopefully your government's taking care of you down there and um, and uh, keep us posted on as it's going. I'd love a uh, live feed broadcast of you getting blown around and trying to do a live <laughs> feed report. That'd be great. But uh, all right. You know, I'll deliver for you. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm part of this network to deliver and be a team member. If you, want, <laughs> if you want a video of me getting blown around, I got you, buddy. <laughs> Be safe. That's all we want first. So uh, this is Chris True. Uh, he is my very special guest this week on the Brenton Not On Tour Quarantine cast. Um, and uh, he is now a part of the Dean Blundell Network. Um, he's now part of this podcast universe uh, with me. And I couldn't be happier that you made some time today. So thanks, buddy. Likewise, man. Thank you all so much. Awesome.